pray for wisdom to solve difficult problems. It is time for you now to receive the impartation I've been talking about. The power of God will move everywhere. Don't focus on what will happen. What is very important is you must receive your gift. You must receive your talent. You must receive your skills. The skills that will take you from nobody to somebody. Amen. The talent that will take you from nobody to somebody. Amen. The gift that will take you from nobody to somebody. Amen. Receive them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Power move. Oh. Holy Ghost. Receive your portion. Your memory that was stolen from you. Recover them now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That spirit that makes you to forget. You don't know what you, where you put your keys. You don't know where you put your bags. Spirit of forgetfulness. Go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command your memory to be refreshed now in Jesus' name. Receive a photographic memory. Receive a photographic memory. Receive a retentive memory. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. From now onwards, when you speak, your word will be a command. Amen. No one will be able to stand against the wisdom the Holy Spirit will give you when you speak in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. No one will be able to stand against the wisdom the Spirit will give you when you speak in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Whenever you open your mouth to speak, the Holy Ghost will fill you with word of wisdom, with word of knowledge. Receive the gift of the word of wisdom in Jesus' name. Receive the gift of the word of knowledge in Jesus' name. Begin to excel in every area of your life. 
Begin to excel in every area of your life. Yeah. I command the spirit of excellency to come upon you. Yeah. Receive them now. Yeah. One, receive them now. Yeah. Two, receive them now. Yeah. Three, receive them now. Yeah. Four, receive them now. Yeah. Five, receive them now. Yeah. Six, receive them now. Yeah. Seven, power, move. You will clap your hand louder. Clap your hand louder. Thank you. Stop there. Stop there. Stop there. Stop there. Now that you clap your hand, any good thing that died in your hand, they are coming back to life. Go ahead. Clap your hand in the name of Jesus. Any good things that die in your hand, I call them back to life. Come 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 back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stop. Ask medical doctor, they will tell you, even a baby when it's dead, even when the baby is born, they slap the baby. Is it not so? There are things in your hand that are lying dormant. You will clap your hand again. As you clap your hand, any good things God has ordained for you must come alive. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Please sit down. Sit down. We are not yet down. I want us to go step by step. Amen. I'm impressed by the Holy Spirit that we need to do something now. And I want you to give me your heart and give me your ears. Because what you are about to hear now is the key that will change many things in your life forever. Amen. For the rest of your life, you will never point finger on anybody to blame them. Amen. For the rest of your life, you will not point finger on anyone to blame them. Amen. You will never point finger on witches and wizards. Amen. Because they will be too small for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. The first thing you will do this year, 2020, keep your eyes on Jesus. If you keep your eyes on man, you will disappoint yourself. Curse is the man who trusts in man. Blesses the man who trusts in the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. See if it says, We must keep our eyes on Jesus. We must keep our eyes on Jesus. Who lead us and make our faith complete? He endured the shame. I'm reading from CEV, not NIV. I'm reading from CEV, not NIV. He endured the shame of being nailed to the cross because he knew that later he will be glad he did. Now he is seated at the right side of God's throne. When you see Jesus sitting at the right hand of God, 
In the book of John, chapter 17, there is a prayer Jesus prayed for his disciples. There is a prayer Jesus prayed for his disciples. That is, those who follow Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, I pray that we may be one. I in them and you in me, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as you are one. If you don't believe in that prayer, at least you will believe in what Paul said in the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Raise your right hand and say this to me. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11, for the one who make people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. Jesus Christ is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Amen. If Jesus is not ashamed to call me and you brother and sister and is sitting at the right hand of God, do you think Jesus will oppose you from sitting there? No, that is why you must fix your eyes on Jesus. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, you will see what Jesus is seeing. You will touch what Jesus is touching. You will do what Jesus did. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Tell your neighbor, this year 2020, this year, fix, your fix your eyes on Jesus. Number two, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. It is your responsibility to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is your responsibility to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, after resurrection, he went up in the eyes of his disciples. They could see Jesus is going up. They look at him the way he's going up. The two angels appear and say to them, the same way you see him going up, the same way he will come down. Do what he told you to do. They went in the upper room, all of them praying. After 10 days, after 10 days, the Holy Spirit came down. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them, somebody say all of them, all of them. were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, you see, it was the responsibility of the apostle, of the disciple to go and wait. This year, you must learn to have time to wait the Holy Spirit. I'm not leaving this place until I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. That's it. If nothing happens tomorrow, do it again. If nothing happens, do it until something happens. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you may not pray against witchcraft because witches know that that one is fire. You command respect. Somebody that is filled with the Holy Spirit command respect. And this year is your year to command many respects. We pray witchcraft power, die. Catch fire, die. Why? Because many of us the level of our faith is far below God's expectation. Small faith. That's why you will come down and deal with them. But the person that has set his eyes on Jesus, he is far, far above principalities and powers. Might and dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. 
You are far above. A witch was asked, what do you do when you see an anointed man of God is coming? He said, we give way. We run away. Before they come, we run away. We know that we can feel that somebody is coming. And I've witnessed also, many times, we cast out unclean spirit. His eyes is closed. When, the more you go close, the more he's going away from you. Which eyes do they use to see? They feel the fire that is in you. The grace to fix your eyes on Jesus and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive them now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Number three, write them down. A wise man take note. You have no choice this year but to raise 12 good altars. How many altars? 12. We have 12 months. You may say, hi, it's very hard. No. Every month can have his own altar. 12 good altars for every month. 12 good altar. Why altar? The strength of every born again is on the altar. If you see an unwanted man of God, check his altar. I had the privilege to sit with many unwanted men of God. And if you check the altar of prayer, you see yourself as a big backslider. I'm telling you that. This man came in my house, man of God. He began to pray, 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 pray. I checked 30 minutes, check one hour. I checked two, two hours. I checked three hours. I checked five hours. I checked six hours. Then he said, tell your wife to put food now. I can eat. And you will see money is coming in my house. Just the way he said, he finished speaking, we had a car wooding at the gate of our house. Somebody came with a note of 100 rand, like this. He said, Shiko, can I give you some money? I said, no. I saw what brought money in your hand. I heard the gospel of many people saying, I don't pray for money. But you spend six good hours in my house praying to call money in, and money have come in. I received that grace. Then he prayed for me. I wish to show you the way he prayed for me. You want me to show you the way he prayed for me? Yes. Then uh, I don't need somebody that is stronger, taller than me. I need somebody shorter and skinny than me. Amen. My friend, come. Let me show them the way this man prayed for me. You will follow my movement, eh? He hold me with two of his hands. He hold me like this and lift me up. Lift up your feet. Go up. <laughs> then he shook me. He shook me. Shook me. Shook me. He said, "Go cast out demons." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Amen. So he pushed me. You know what he said to me? Thank you, sir. Sorry, eh? His wife is watching. Praise the Lord. He said to me, cast out demons in black men, in white men, in Indian. Cast them out. Then he pushed me. I went pew, pew, pew. I said, my God. From that day, something enter me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyway, praise the Lord. Amen. What is on the altar? Make an altar on earth for me. Sacrifice on it. Your burn offering. Fellowship offering. Your sheep and goat. Your cattle, wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. Exodus chapter 20, verse 24. 
Wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. The altar you raise must be here in the land of the living. You don't go on the altar empty-handed. You go with a sacrificial offering, burn offering, fellowship offering, your sheep, your goats, your cattle. Wherever I cause my name to be honored, this is the altar where we cause the name of the Lord to be honored. So stop appearing before the Lord empty-handed. When you are coming in the altar of God, bring a sacrificial offering. It is for your good. It is for your advantage. It's not a donation to help God. You cannot help God. The Bible says the earth is the Lord and everything in it. How can you help God? When will you start to help God? Your giving help you and your children, children, children. I thought you would say amen loud and clear. Amen. Nothing happened by accident. In the book of Genesis chapter 13, verse 18, Abraham went to live near the great tree of Mamre at Hebron, where he pitched his tent. There he built an altar to the Lord. When you get into Genesis 18, he built the altar in Genesis 13. When you get into Genesis 18, the Bible said the Lord appeared to Abraham near the gate tree of Mamre, where God appeared on the altar. And that was the altar that provoked the birth of Isaac. From that altar, Abraham said, ah, ah. These three people are not normal people. Uh-uh. Come, please, let me give you some water to drink so that you can re refresh. And the Bible says, those who refresh others will be refreshed. God is the one who gave us this gospel. Abraham was the first man to feed God, to give God water to drink. When he did that, God said, by this time, next year, your wife Sarah will have a child. And the word came to pass. There is somebody here, by this time next year, we will celebrate your baby. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. There is someone here, by this time next year, by this time next year, we will celebrate your businesses. Not one business, many of them. Amen. Your thanksgiving offering will be great. Amen. I thought we say amen loud and clear. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. There are 12 altars you need to raise the altar of Noah, the altar that will challenge the Amalekites. Call that altar Jehovah Nisi. Altar of El Eloi Israel. Altar of Bethel. Altar of Elijah. Altar of Jehovah Jara, where the Lord will provide for you. The altar of healing. The altar of Solomon. The altar of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. The altar of Gideon. Your body must be an altar unto the Lord. Number four. Number one, keep your eyes on Jesus. Number two, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Number three, raise an altar unto the Lord. Number four, dream big. Dream big. Your dream is anything you want to do, is anything you want to become. When you see nightmare, don't compare them with the dream I'm talking about. All your nightmare, not one of them shall come to pass. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Dream big. Joseph said, I saw the moon bearing down to me. I saw the sun bearing down to me. I saw the star bearing down to me. His father said, hmm? You mean uh, I will bow down to you? It came to pass. Dream big. And your good dreams shall come to pass. Amen. Everything you do every morning determines what you will become. 
I'm sorry to tell you that all your friends that are failure, disconnect from them from now onwards. The friend that has been there in your life, you don't see them achieving greatness. Push them away. Your problem can be them. Do you know that Peter, Peter said, I'm going to fish. But before he went to fish, he cursed himself. He denied Jesus. He put curses on himself. Well, I be lie, I don't know Jesus. I've never been with him. That is what he said. <laughs> Then he said, I'm going to fish. Andrew said, let us go. John said, let us go. They caught nothing until Jesus came. From that time, Peter was not an apostle anymore because he renounced Jesus. He rejected Jesus. Jesus said, anyone who renounced me, I will renounce them before my father in heaven and before the angel. Because he renounced Jesus, Jesus also rejected him. He was under a case. He worked all night. They caught nothing. Jesus had to come back and restore the man. You know what the question, the question Jesus asked Peter? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? How many times? Three times. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. Then the case was broken. He caught a lot of fish. Somebody here, you may be following somebody that is under many cases, and these cases attach himself to you. Today, I disconnect you in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray also for your children. Any ungodly friend that your children have, let the Holy Ghost push them away in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Number five, walk before the Lord faithfully and be blameless. How would you walk before the Lord this year? Faithfully, be faithful, and be blameless. Barrenness have lasted a bit long in the life of Abraham. He labored under a case of barrenness for 25 good years. In the book of Genesis chapter 17, God said to Abraham, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I'm God Almighty, Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. You need to see many signs and wonders in your lifetime. Not only this year. Walk before the Lord faithfully and be blameless. Number six, be humble, very humble. Listen to this. First Peter. Chapter 5, verse 5. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to your elder. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you, clothe yourself with humility. Put on the garment of humility toward one another. Because God opposed the proud, but give grace to the humble. God give favor to the humble. God exalt the humble, not the proud. Live a life of humility. Humble yourself. Under the mighty hand of God, you will do exploit. Look at Moses. Very humble man. And he conducted the deliverance of three million Jews. Look the way we struggle with one demon. That means something is wrong with our life. I'm preaching to myself. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. One person, Moses, very humble, more the humility Moses had, <laughs> very humble than anyone else in the face of the earth, he conducted deliverance of three millions of people. Wonderful. Crossing the, the Red Sea was not really a problem. He just stretched out his hand and the Red Sea opened. God pushed the water on the side. They crossed over. Deliverance is a process. What, one of the things you need to understand. You don't just receive one deliverance. Forget about it. As the Israelites, they will tell you, Three times or four times, there were no water to drink. 
and we humiliated Moses. Moses was cool. Moses' main goal was to cry to God. Crying to God solved a lot of problems. Shedding tears because of your own emotion will take you nowhere. But when you cry to God, you will get the answer. I thought you would say amen loud and clear. Amen. Humble people do great things. Number seven. Seek wisdom that comes from heaven. I believe we talk about the wisdom of uh, Solomon, the wisdom of Daniel, the wisdom of Joseph, the wisdom of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Very relevant. There is what we call earthly wisdom and spiritual wisdom, demonic wisdom. It does not come from above. It does not come from God. The wisdom that comes from God is first of all pure. James chapter 3 verse 17. The wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy. Anytime you see somebody submitting, he's not a fool, he's a man of wisdom. His wisdom came from above. That's why you see, Mr. Man, try to listen to your wife. The Bible says, wife, submit to your husband. Are you with me? Yeah. Wife, do what? Submit to your husband. So if your wife is submitting to you, that doesn't mean she's a fool. She's not a fool. She knows what she's doing. She's a person of wisdom. His wisdom is coming from above. Now, the woman, the wife that is not submitting to his husband, Pay attention. He has an unclean wisdom, a demonic wisdom. That's the only way you identify somebody that is not obeying the word of God. I'm praying for somebody here this year. When you open your mouth to speak, no one will be able to stand against the wisdom the Spirit will give you as you speak. Amen. I thought your head man will be louder than that one. Now that I'm speaking to you, there is somebody here. God has removed your name from the book of failure. Yeah. Now your name is in the book of successful people. Yeah. Number eight. Dress code. Don't dress any hour. When you are going for interview, Check your air cut. I wish to cut everything so that I don't pay anything. Amen. Amen. Check your air cut when you're going for interview. The person that will interview will just look at you and say, you've missed it, the way you look. Dress smart. Even when you come in the house of God, be smart. Because your dress code speak louder. Some people even if they dress down, but you can see that this one is classy. Hallelujah. These are the things you must do this year. Don't just dress any hour and walk any hour. Sister, don't walk like a... Walk majestically. If the curly say yes. But when you see a brother walking the way I'm just walking now, you begin to pray, oh God, the Father, the Son, we are in trouble here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not a man of grammar, but check your grammar also. Even me, let us try to correct few things there and speak good English. English. Amen. Amen. Number nine. Win soul. Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Win soul. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins soul is wise. All the luggage we have, I'm talking about our dress code, our car, our good house, 
Indeed, these are the blessings from God. We must enjoy them in the land of the living. But they will never enter heaven. The things that we will take in heaven is soul. Win as many souls. Don't be afraid to tell them about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Win soul. Tell them about, tell them about her, win soul. Win soul. This, year. this year. Number 10. Bring gift on the feet of the apostle. Number 11. Invest in property. Invest in property. Buy land. Buy house. Fix them. Resell it. Buy another house. Fix it beautiful. Increase the price. Resell it. Buy as many land. Buy as many house. Let somebody say amen. amen. Let somebody say thank you, thank you, Jesus. Buy as many properties. Invest in properties. It cannot rot. It cannot lose value. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number 12. Bible school. Do everything in your power to register as a student in the Bible school. Not everybody go to Bible school to become a pastor. You need the keen knowledge of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You need the word of God. How to put your leg, how to speak correctly. If you don't learn the word of God, they will deceive you here and there. If we have the apostle of God, we have also the apostle of Satan. If we have the evangelist of God, we, also, we have also the evangelist of Satan. If we have the house of God, we have also the house of Satan. If you refuse to learn the word of God in the Bible school, you may hear somebody speaking in tongue and you think he's speaking godly tongue, but it's a satanic tongue. You need to be part of the cell group. And the Lord will help you mightily. Let somebody say amen. amen. Did we learn something? Amen. God bless you. This is our year of many signs and wonders. Whatever I told you, I put them in practice, I personally. I'm not just telling you what to do. I've done this since 1999. Today is 2020. It worked for me. It will work for you. Amen. We need to be a blessing in this land of the living, not a burden. What we know, we must impart to others so that they can become successful also. Praise the Lord. Amen. This year, 2020, I have a pleasure to tell somebody here, please close your eyes, bow your head. Don't look around, please. Bow your head. My friend, you heard me telling us what to do this year. 2020, beautiful year. The year that is complete in everything. And you are not born again, that's not good. You want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Raise your hand anywhere you are. Jesus is here. He will see your hand. I will see your hand. I will pray for you now. You want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Beautiful. Raise your hand up. That is a very good decision you are taking. Raise your hand. Push it above your head. Let a worker see your hand. Praise the Lord. You've done well, my daughter. That's a very good decision. If you know that you used to be born again, but now you are walking outside of the world, you can restart again. That's not a problem. Rededicate your life to the Lord. Do it now. Raise your hand. Take it easy. Nobody's looking around. Push your hand up. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. 
Born again are not sinners. Sinners are not born again. You know what? There are many decisions we have to take this year, 2020. The best one, you start now, right in the house of God, giving your life to Jesus. Push your hand up. Thank you, Lord. You've done well to raise your hand. Now, say this prayer with me. Mostly you that have raised your hand. Everybody say this to me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come to you as a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Save my life. Write my name in the book of eternal life. As from today, I'm born into the family of God. I'm born again. Amen. You have done well to give your life to Jesus. What's your name? Huh? Sons and wonders. Many sons and wonders. Favor. Anyway, those that will receive a new name this year, your expectation shall not be cut off in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the year we've been waiting for. And our two feet are on it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wonderful Jesus. Raise your right and say this to me, Father, Father, I want to say thank you for everything you did in my life last year. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you will do this year. Thank you for many signs and wonders that I'm experiencing already. In the name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. This year, anywhere I go, mankind will show me favor. God will show me favor. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I will experience many signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Wonderful. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Take it easy. Praise the Lord. The Lord told me to tell you there are people here in your family where you are coming from. Nobody has ever drive his own car. You, because you are hearing me now, this year you will buy your own car. Yeah. That is why there is a dance we are dancing here. There is a way I will drive my car in Tembisa in Soweto, and in Santon. Even in the city of Johannesburg. I know the way people of Soweto drive. I know the way people of Tembisa drive. I know the way people of Santon drive. I know the way people of Johannesburg drive. We went in Mozambique, the way we were driving, the police stopped us. They say, are you from Johannesburg? You say, yes. I say, no wonder. Continue, go. <laughs> say, if you were Mozambican, I was going to give you a fine, if you want. But because you are coming from where the head of people, they just turn around. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How do you drive in Soweto? How do you drive in Santo? Amen. Amen. So our dancing is going with uh, our song. Let's go. Somebody say Baba. Somebody say Baba. 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 Somebody say, Baba, 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 Ba
blood of Jesus set me free from condemnation. The blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus set me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set me free. I know the blood of Jesus Christ has set me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set me free. I am no longer bound. By Satan, the blood of Jesus set me free. I am no longer bound. By Satan, the blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus shall set me free. The blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus set me free. I know the blood of Jesus Christ has set me free. From sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus set me free. Come on, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Tell him my hand. I don't know about you. The blood of Jesus set me free. I'm not telling you. I don't know about you. The blood of Jesus set me free. Come on. I don't know about you. The blood of Jesus set me free. Come on. I don't know about you. The blood of Jesus set me free. Come on. I don't know about you. The blood of Jesus set me free. Tell your neighbor, come on, come on. I don't know about you. The blood of Jesus set me free. Na tombo pe na pokwa na kosale la Yesu. Na tongo pe na pokwa, na koku misa Yesu. The blood of Jesus set me free. 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 This year, your year of many signs and wonders. Who has the finance? Concerning your business, concerning your house, concerning the works of your hand. Whatever demons and agent of Satan have been saying concerning your life is cancelled. Yeah. Whatever familiar spirit has been decreeing against your life is cancelled. Yeah. Who has the finance? Yeah. To overturn my life, I run. It turn my life, I run. He makes a way to them. Jehovah has the 